Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you related to the integumentary system. Uh, it's a good one about integumentary interventions and venous stasis ulcers or venous insufficiency ulcers. But before I get to that, just a quick thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that as you are preparing for this major exam, that this is, I mean, it's... It, if not the biggest step you've taken thus far, it's maybe the very biggest step you'll ever take in your PT career. I know that as you're going through this, it's not easy. There's a lot of time, effort, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into this. And let me just say thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that here in short order, you will be through the exam and on the other side, you'll be a, a clinician right alongside me. So I appreciate the effort you put into this. Just keep in mind and remember, I tell this to students all the time, but remember, this is a great intersection of your skills and your interests. So keep that in mind. This is something that you like. You like doing this. So I encourage you to, to just keep that in mind. It's something that is worthwhile, worth doing, worth it not just for you, but also for your patients and for many years to come will be a blessing to you. Uh, we just got back from the CSM conference. So that was a lot of fun. In fact, a lot of you who are listening to this probably stopped by and said hello to me in person. That was super fun. I, I was just blown away at uh, not only that people are actually listening to this. It's always fun to, to know that there's people on the other side. I mean, I do, I get to see the analytics and I, I see that we're, you know, well over half million downloads. Like there's a lot of people listening in one way or another, but I just want to say that it just blows me away that there, there are so many people that are interested in trying to improve in their NPT preparations. And again, thank you for that. Thank you for the support. Another thing that I know I, I harp on it on some of these episodes, but if you don't mind, just take a sec, leave a, a review over in Google Play, Apple iTunes, or Spotify. It really only takes like two seconds to go in there and do that. I'd really appreciate it if you would. It really helps as we get into the algorithms and try to, to spread this across the, across the PT world that it's, it's a good way to study. It's a great way to go through content. It's quick, it's easy. And on your part, it only takes just one second to say thank you and to, to leave me a review over on any of the, the fine places you're listening to this podcast. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question here for today. So the integumentary system, this is one of the, I guess you'd classify it in the other systems. It is often grouped in with lymphatic. So lymphatic and integumentary, and then you have all of the other systems. But really, this is outside of the big three systems, cardio, muscle, neuro. Now we're into the integumentary system, somewhere between eight and 11 questions on this. Today's question is in relation to the interventions section on the exam. So let's go ahead and dive into our question and we'll talk about it together. Which of the following interventions is contraindicated for the treatment of venous insufficiency ulcers? So which of the following interventions is contraindicated for the treatment of venous insufficiency ulcers? One, compression garments. 2. Paste bandage, 3. Short stretch compression wraps, and 4. Whirlpool treatments. So again, which of the following interventions is contraindicated for the treatment of venous insufficiency ulcers? We have 1. Compression garments, 2. Paste bandage, 3. Short stretch compression wraps, and 4. Whirlpool treatments. All right, so the question really is, the premise is, do you understand the mechanism or the, the idea behind venous insufficiency ulcers such that you understand what interventions are advisable and which ones are not advisable? So in this case, the correct answer is the, the unadvisable or the contraindicated treatment would be whirlpool treatments. Now, why is this? There's three primary reasons. Number one, whirlpool treatments are done in a dependent position. So almost categorically, you will be in a dependent position. You could make an argument that there could be a case where the patient is supine in the water. But again, it's, it's more likely that the patient will be in a dependent position. So number one, dependent positioning. Number two, the warm water will increase venous dilation and thus exacerbate edema. So we've got warm water that will increase and exacerbate the edema. And number, four, or number three, the last, sorry, <laughs> these are three reasons why whirlpools are ill-advised. So Dependent position, warm water, increasing edema. And number three is whirlpool treatments add moisture to an already highly exudating wound. So remember, you want wounds to be moist, but not wet. I know that sounds funny, but you want it to be moist, not wet. You want the skin to be dry, but not too dry. So it's definitely a Goldilocks principle of not too wet, but not too dry. You want it just right. So whirlpool treatments tend to be ill-advised for those three reasons. 
It dependent position, too warm, which causes further edema. And then the increased moisture content will only exacerbate the maceration of the skin, which could cause further skin breakdown. Now, these other answer options, as you look at them, compression garments are, are really a very, very fabulous way <laughs> to, to treat someone who has venous insufficiency ulcers. So all the patients that I've ever had with venous insufficiency ulcers, this has been like far and away the most important thing that I've done in their intervention is to add compression. So compression either via compression garment or a short stretch compression wrap or a paste bandage or any combination of the three in series or, or as it progresses using any of these cases where you have this uh, compression which improves or counteracts the venous insufficiency. It helps with venous return. And so with compression garments, they typically are provided in three different levels. And clearly there, there are exceptions and you can go above and below these, but the, the three main levels are 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury for mild disease, 30 to 40 for moderate disease, and 40 to 50 for severe disease. So those are the three categories of pressure for compression garments. Paste bandages, a lot of you will be familiar with this. It's called an Una's boot or an Una boot. That's spelled U-N-N-A. So I think Una was a physician that first described this procedure. So it's a basically a non-elastic compression bandage that has a paste to it. So this paste is usually like an anti-itch medicine, like zinc oxide. So that's like in calamine. So zinc oxide or calamine or glycerin or gelatin, something that helps to add adequate moisture to the skin. It's non-itchy. And then it also, is, because it's inelastic, the muscle pump underneath it can further increase the venous return. And then finally, short stretch compression wraps, much like with lymphedema, you want to reduce the edema load in the tissue. And so therefore, short stretch, wrap, short stretch compression wraps, these have a low resting pressure and a high working pressure, meaning that when they're sitting on your skin, just when after you've wrapped them, they don't feel particularly tight. But because they are short stretch, they're relatively inelastic, that as you activate the muscle pump underneath, that it will increase the venous return, again, much like Una's boot and compression garments, all doing essentially the same thing of increasing venous return. So the ill-advised or contraindicated treatment will be the whirlpool treatments. And again, that's because of dependent positioning, increased edema from the warm water, and then the increase in moisture because of the, they're already a, a very moist wound, highly exudative. And so that would only further exacerbate the moisture in the wound. And again, this is one of the keys. Like I tell this to all, all any, any of the students I've had in clinic, point out, point out that with wounds, the real key is to keep the wound moist, but the skin dry. And if you can fit those two categories, you'll be right about whatever wound care treatment you choose because you're keeping the wound moist and the skin dry. And again, it's a Goldilocks principle. You want it to be just right, but the point is that you want the moisture in the wound to be adequate, but not too much, and the skin to be dry, but not too dry. And that'll, that'll solve almost every, every case of, especially venous insufficiency ulcers. Now, just of note, it is possible. And in fact, it, in almost all cases, well, I don't know. I'll put it in the possibility, not the likely category. But it is possible to have both venous and arterial insufficiency in the same patient. Venous meaning that the veins are bad and you can't return the blood. And arterial in that you can't supply the blood to the lower extremity or, or any of them, the upper extremity, but usually lower extremity. So it is possible to have mixed disease. And so therefore, it requires careful examination by use of the PT to determine whether or not you have isolated venous insufficiency, arterial insufficiency. Like I remember very clearly a patient I had that had mixed, they had both symptoms of the venous insufficiency in some of their wounds, arterial in others. And it was just definitely a mixed bag of intervention. And so the intervention strategies were a mixed bag. You did some compression, but you didn't want to do too much because that would exacerbate the arterial insufficiency. A lot of interplay between the medical team. And so the entire interdisciplinary team, just to make sure that you were treating the patient in a, in a holistic approach. So uh, again, back to this question, which of the following interventions is contraindicated? The whirlpool treatment would be contraindicated and likely would exacerbate the venous insufficiency ulcers uh, just because, again, added moisture, increased edema, and dependent positioning. 
All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Again, sure appreciate you going along with me as we go through these podcast episodes. Uh, If you haven't yet, this is the final call. If you wanna join us in Chicago, uh, again, totally free weekend, hotels covered, meals are covered. You just have to get yourself to Chicago. That's the weekend of February 29th through March 2nd. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, Again, it's a sweet deal. You get access to all of our premium features, all of our exams. I mean, you'll get our full spectrum of services Plus, there's a lecture that's going to be on student loan repayment, how to reduce your student loan burden. So, I mean, chances are, uh, just let's be honest here. Uh, I know Connor who does that student loan repayment, and he saves people thousands of dollars. I mean, way more than the cost of the airplane ticket to get there to Chicago for February 29th through through uh, March 1st, that weekend. You're going to save just just in that. Plus, uh, again, you're getting the full full access to our premium features, which again is a $500 value. All of that's totally free. You just have to get yourself to Chicago. The best way to register for that, those seats are going fast. You've got to register right away. Go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you'll be able to, to register easily and you'll be able to join me in Chicago here in a couple of, really just in two weeks, but... In any case, yeah, let's bring it to a conclusion. Thanks, everyone. Sure appreciate you. Don't forget to leave a review. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Will Crane fist pumps all around, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.